The world is changing. 51 years ago, the War of the Wilds came to a stalemate. The people of the Grainor Peninsula set all plant life ablaze to stop the stranglehold and built a mighty wall to keep the wilds at bay. All the while, they sat atop their monument, never truly knowing why this all began. A likeness of peace blanketed the blasted lands. One year ago, it all changed. An ancient god, once bound by old magic, found himself free and took his vengeance as his shackles were shattered. The mountainous city of Bulwark paid a grave price, but in the wake of this destruction comes the first glimpses of the possibility for true and honest peace. Our heroes venture from their familiar homeland into the fullness of what their world was before the war, a world they've touched but never truly seen. They find themselves caught between a land that has tried to end their lives hundreds of times over, and a country they helped decimate. Under the canopy, they seek glory, truth, and salvation. The world is changing, and their hands will guide it. Hello, and welcome back to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I continue to be your GM. Today, Mordecai, Zephyr, Jackson, and company arrive at their first destination and start to immerse themselves in the culture of their former enemy. Thank you to our backers, Nate, Kim, and Brayton for their support. As a reminder, as you're listening to this, Griffin and I are going to be out at the upcoming Gen Con. That's Gen Con 2019. We'll be there from Friday morning through probably Sunday mid-afternoon-ish. Uh, if you happen to be out and around there, uh, flag us down. Say hi. Uh, we are eminently contactable on Twitter. Uh, me at TQ Loudly and Griffin at Griffcold. Um, like I said, if you see us, say hi. We're looking forward to meeting y'all. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. You want to know a sad truth? Oh, hit me with it. I love this, sad truth. This isn't going to be very good for the people at home, but this is my attempt at a summer beard. I noticed, okay, real talk though, like your your fiance put some very lovely portraits of the two of you up on the social medias, mm-hmm. and there's one where like you're in the pool, so your hair is darker because yeah. it's wet. You yeah. got a pretty decent beard there, my dude. It's, it look, I have a nice amount of facial hair. The problem is, is that my hair is very blonde. <laughs> you're yeah. a blonde so You can't boy. see it. It's so frustrating. I know how to make this work for you. You're not going to like it, but you got to go half ill. And shave the head and so that your beard is the only <laughs> hair on your head so that it stands out more. No, that's my brother's because because my older brother, um, you know, uh, has the Scottish and Irish genes of the family. And I clearly have the German um, side of the family. And so Adam has uh, has balded pretty much, but has just a big, luscious red beard. Mm. Um, I am the opposite of have, have I still have a very beautiful head of hair. You got that Kendall hair. Yes. Um, and so that, I guess that's the trade off is I could either have a full <laughs> head of hair or a beard. And I'm like, I'm happy with what my, my spin of that genetic roulette wheel. Um, I gotta be honest with you, man. <laughs> I, I'd take the hair over the beard as, as I am losing but, the hair. But then you look at people. Like um, you know, a, a BG alum, Dylan Stretchberry, who's got just a gorgeous head of hair and just the most grizzled beard. I've... Well, we can't all be perfect. Oh, D Stretch, what a dude! He was in a college humor video, and I was like, "What?" He was in two college humor videos. Wait, what a second! What is he? I haven't seen the other. Yeah, one. there's the one, the one where he plays shirtless. the quote hot boyfriend, and the other one where he's the hot shirtless guy. That tracks. Yeah, so it's like, well, you put a show on, he's no, like, no, I'm good. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was watching it just because I like college humor, and I was like, what the fuck? Dylan Stretchberry's okay, in that's this. That's not even the best thing he's done. The best thing Dylan Stretchberry has done is a show called My Crazy oh, no. X, where mm-hmm. he is listed yes. as tree fucker. Huh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was a drug dealer on a different episode. Yes, he was. He was on another episode, and he he played a pretty convincing drug dealer but he also played a tree fucker because mm-hmm. <laughs> of course he did because if your name is dylan stretchberry you fuck trees um, clearly. Uh, uh, shout out to dylan stretchberry a uh, friend of the show <laughs> anyway go support our friend yeah. dylan stretchberry <laughs> actually i just remember can i share one short my only dylan stretchberry Please story do. 
It's an incredibly short encounter. I barely knew the guy. I don't know if he would remember me. I was on prop crew for a show that the university was doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I was just off stage to receive, you know, like a coat and like a prop gun uh, off off stage. And he was, you know, I'd just be the handoff person. Mm-hmm. And at one point, like all the, our entire interaction was every time he handed it off to me, he would snap his fingers into a finger gun and say, thanks, brother. And then just carry on with his day. <laughs> like, <laughs> his, his use of brother. It makes you feel so warm and good about yourself, it, it right? It did. I was like, uh, yeah, no problem, Dylan. Like, <laughs> What show was this? Abundance. Uh, Abundance. The weird cowboy oh. show that wasn't about cowboys, but it was instead very, very sad Where, and very, um, very serious. Like cowboys. Um, and and an actress broke her leg, I want to oh, say. Oh, no, her, 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 her arm. Because, it was her arm. Cause, yeah, because gotcha. she was in – no, she was in a, a fight, like a like a bit of a, a tussle, a little bit of a scene with Dylan Stretchberry. And, like, she yes. went to, like, hit him or something, and he, like, is supposed to catch her hand, but, like – got like just the side of her hand and like Ooh. broke her hand <sighs> yeah but but i gotta give it to the actress kendra beitzel also friend uh-huh. of the show she finished that scene I, like a fucking champion i was i was the first person off stage to receive her stuff for that moment and i watched her come down the because this was in the eva and so i was caught her come down that aisle and her composure kept but i saw her face begin to break and i went oh no something is wrong and as soon as she crossed sight lines she was down but she made it all the way through without yeah. a word no, without it, a peep of pain mm-hmm. goddamn all-star like yeah, we would just talk to each other like we were John Lennon. So I'd see him like, hey, Kendra Weitzel. <laughs> by hey, Zach Rob. <laughs> Hello, Zach Rob. The sun is beating down on your party as you cross the open field to the market of Senge. A bustling market smaller than you're used to, but full of life in a way that's different from your new norm. The markets of Erden are intentional, neat, orderly. Confined spaces made for strict planning and zoning for mercantile. The frequent and sudden scarcity of goods often makes for chaotic scrambles of purchasing. Here, the only thing more open than the skies above are the tents flapping in the breeze, and the only thing more random than the clouds in that sky are the variety of goods for sale. Chiron pipes up from the back of Ignatius. All right, so uh, so here's the deal. Hereabouts is the uh, best place for outsiders that uh, we're going to be until we hit Lee. And even that's because you're uh, distinguished guests of the council. So you'll have your fill uh, to get the feelings of the uh, emotional landscape of the folk out here. Now I got a few errands to run while we're here amongst the gentle folks, so uh, let's plan on meeting at the ill-kept keep. I got a spot for us there. Is is that a description or a name? It's a name. Okay. Also a description, probably. You'll see it when you see it. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'm guessing all right. physically we'll all fit in out here now? More or less, actually. Yeah, y- y- y'all should be fine. Your clothes are a little weird, but, uh, I mean, that that's... Hey. That's just, just the facts. Is you're, well, you're better put together than most people out here. Not a whole lot of work for tailors this way, you know? I'm literally wearing wood on my clothes. What do you want uh, Okay, from me? you're fine. Thank you. God. Point. More um, can I see people from here? Sure can. Um, yeah, I just want to kind of get a feel of, of the, the, the garb. Absolutely. Of, so, um, uh, how about everybody actually rolls me some perception checks? Cool. Yeah, boss. Starting us off strong, Gwendolyn. That's a oh, my perception's higher now. I forgot. That, that's a twenty. Ooh. That's a that's a sixteen. Fourteen. Okay, Jackson. The market proper seems pretty crowded, but the people thin out considerably as you, uh, your gaze moves towards the water. Uh, on the edge of the massive lake, you see people relaxing. Even a few kids seem to be playing with something in the water. But the heart of the market is under this massive, like a shelter. Like think a park shelter. But 30 times the size. It's got a mess. Like a gazebo? A pergola. Sure. It's a giant pergola. A pavilion. Pavilion is a good word. Yes, a pavilion. A covered garage. A covered, what's that, car park. (laughs) A car park. 
Yeah, but it, uh, a real <laughs> fancy covered car park. But yeah, a, a shelter house cool. kind of thing. And that is where a lot of the market seems to be taking place. But that's back set more towards uh, the woods to the north of you all. Uh, Zephyr, the variety of goods on sale here is truly spectacular. Everything from wood and steel weapons to foods that back home would have been considered uh, a rare delicacy uh, are sold by the bushel here. You can see a couple of uh, random types of shops as well. Um, a very rare tailor pops up here and there. A cobbler. A couple of uh, magic salesmen, people who are... Uh, here to help restock the uh, the Wizards of the Wilds with their uh, spell components. There's even a large wagon pretty close to the coastline that seems to hold a couple of cages as well. Cool. Um. Yeah. No. Chase. Um. Yes. But as far as like the the, the clothing, people, and yes, stuff you were goes. looking for people. Absolutely. Um. This is a fairly wide variety of different types and styles of clothing. Most people seem to be wearing uh, largely simple garbs. Uh, you can tell that um, uh, people are coming from uh, maybe not necessarily what would be considered back in the Kindle Land's lower income. Um, but you're a perceptive enough and uh, insightful enough individual to know that these people are not dressing to impress. They are dressing to survive. These are folks that may have come in from multiple days of travel potentially to do their shopping for multiple weeks or months at a time. Cool. Yeah. Now, before I even like approach the gathering, I guess, of people, um, going to just disguise self to just change my clothes. Oh, um, sure. And just so I can. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable by my well. Even though I'm muted colors, I'm still in a pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they're outfit. well put together. Uh, you you snap your fingers and you are instantly transformed from your uh, well put together and assembled uh, outfit into something that is maybe not ragged, but at the very least uh, more muted and simple. Cool, well constructed, but are made up for work and not for style. Awesome. Mordecai, you, uh, your eyes pass over everything completely. You just kind of take in a moment to, to get some of this breeze uh, coming in at you. Mm. There's a nice uh, wind coming from the north and it's carrying some of that uh, nice green smell that you have once again become accustomed to. You hate to admit it, but it, it does feel like home for you. You ah. hate it, but it's true. You're very comfortable out here. Yeah. But then there's something on that wind that's a little sour, just a little different from what you expected. As you close your eyes for that moment and you inhale deeply, uh, that sour smell is there and just hits you like a ton of bricks. And then as soon as the breeze dies down, it is gone as quickly as it came. But you can tell it definitely came from the north, from the woods up in that direction. Huh. All right. Stanky woods. Got some stank wood. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> do, the do the stanky wood. Please don't. Uh. Please don't do the stanky wood. <laughs> All right. Right then. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this taken care of. Um, like I said, uh, meet me tonight at the kept keep. It's uh, and he points over to an area roundabouts the middle of one of the more open parts of the field you don't see anything necessarily there but you don't see nothing you just see a lot of tents there as well so you you all have uh the evening to kind of have your run of the joint what would you like to do what does the oh, um man. does there seem to be anything remotely like a military presence um or even a guard go ahead uh go ahead and roll me an insight check uh, blah, blah, blah. 23 hot damn yeah I forgot I was um, trained in that <laughs> <laughs> that's nice right? Right? Pretty, pretty handy so your attention uh, which was immediately drawn to the market itself is able to zero in on a couple of individuals uh, that are a little bit more finely dressed than others uh, you can see some tabards marked with different sigils uh, but they seem to be better dressed and better equipped than most folk that uh, you have seen thus far. Uh, if you had a, a guess and you've got exactly one, you're betting that these are guards that may not be hired by a governing body, 
but by the individual merchants in that area. Perhaps uh, they are hired on to keep the peace around them so that at least near their stores, there is safety. So there may or may not be actual town guards somewhere, but they're if they are, they're not the people to be concerned about. There's a lot of private private contractor bodyguard types. Exactly. <laughs> you got you got a lot of sell swords in the area. Yeah. It's a free market. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate capitalism. Oh, I was going to make an open air joke, but free that works too. Do do I think I just for the quick one up I could take him, right? <laughs> Fifty-fifty. Okay, Ooh. just to get the lay of the land and the understanding of what I we, we're walking into here. If I if I because I'm walking in in some very shiny armor, you are a very you know imposing figure. You are, yeah, you are. You are certainly of the people that you are going in with. You are a um, a cut above what these people might be used to seeing. That's at least something that you could easily surmise. Um, something else that I forgot to ask you last episode. Um, you still got Gary with you? Uh, yeah, Gary's with me. He's a lot quieter. Yeah, now. I mean, he do- he literally can't talk yeah, anymore. He can't Not talk. like he we used can, to. We can telepath, but we can't to each yes. other. But we can't. Talk. He can. Yeah. He can talk to me. Yes, that's true. All right, so what are y'all doing? I know what I'm doing. Per per my my good old chat with the wanderer, I'm I'm basically just gonna go window shopping. Okay. Because I want to see if anything jumps out at me as something that would interest mm-hmm. him, or or if anything if anything catches my eye. Honestly, I'm just gonna go. I'm I'm still kind of considering it. I'm still kind of thinking over what what we talked about. So I just kind of want to see what my options are, see if anything stands out to me. Absolutely. Perfect. This seems like the best place to do it. Zephyr, what are you thinking? Uh, well, the first thing, I want to look into see if there's any cool uh, magic-y things. If there's one thing that Zephyr knows about the folks over the wall is that they're sort of more in touch with magic. Certainly. So just kind of see what there is to see in that vein. Um Maybe using my magic eyes as sort of a way to kind of guide me towards it. Absolutely. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Appraisal. Eyes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I grow a, a little arcane monocle. Or, 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 not a monocle, but, you know, whatever. A spyglass? A jeweler's loop? Yeah, the jeweler's <laughs> loop. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Hmm, yes. But, yeah, um, so that's the first thing I want to do is just kind of look around um, for some cool magical baubles. See if there's anything going on over here. Okay. And Jackson, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to try to find whatever the holy city of the area or if, uh, holy area of the city is or if there's sure. temples or anything like that. I'm particularly looking for anything that's got dragon iconography um, or anything that could remotely relate back to what I've seen Amareya be. Absolutely. But I'm not holding my breath that I'm going to find the secret temple of Amarea here in the boonies. So I'll <laughs> settle for I'll settle for whatever I can find. Now, Amarea Dejani will join you in that endeavor. Right. Um, he is looking around, not confused, but curious. Uh, it seems like this is, while he is not unfamiliar with this area, he is unfamiliar with this area in its current incarnation. So uh, he doesn't know what may have risen or fallen in the time that he was uh, uh, kind of locked up there. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead with the uh, with the shopping boys first. Um, Yo. Shopping. Shopping. Let's go to the open air mall today. <laughs> uh, the two oh, of you head off into uh, the uh, the market proper underneath the uh, the shelter house and it very quickly becomes stiflingly hot even in this temperate almost winter or well fall to winter vibe uh it gets very stuffy in here as soon as you cram any amount of folks around um yeah you walk through the uh, the markets. Go ahead and make the investigation checks because we're looking around for something specific. Zafir, you can. Are you sure? I am positive. Zafir, you can't have it okay. at advantage because you're using your uh, your magic jeweler, your oh. magic eyes. Magic eyes. I got a. Oh. The, the, 
my second roll was a one, but my first one was a 16. So. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, that's all right, then. We can work with that. Mordecai, you get distracted almost immediately. There are... <laughs> Um, there is a lot of people selling very fine weapons that are, they shouldn't be allowed for druids, but because druid is so popular out here, uh, they have actually made weapons that shouldn't work for druids. Like they they found the loopholes and are able to make some very fine, incredible things, uh, out of almost nothing. You spend your time just hand over chest looking at these, this beautiful craftsmanship. And they are way above my, my, uh, paycheck. Absolutely. Zephyr, you are, uh, able to grab him by the neck though, as you are, uh, as you find pretty much exactly what you're looking for. It is a, uh, purple tent dotted at, with stars and half moons. Uh, This is exactly what you were looking for. This is about as magic as you can get. The tent itself is radiating some sort of uh, low-level power. It's probably like an alarm spell or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sure enough, as the pair of you walk in, rather than a traditional, like, blaring alarm, a little bell jingles, even though there was no bell to jingle. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a good use of an alarm spell. Yeah, you know. I like it. Um, Hey, Chase, here's a question. Uh Uh-huh. So in the last year, yes, we've probably earned some money, right? You. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I was actually looking over my sheet. I think I have zero money, which is not unusual mm-hmm. for me. But I, at the moment, I have forty-one gold. Okay, we will say that each of you uh, left uh, Erden with an additional hundred and fifty gold. Oh, okay. boys, <laughs> got us a payday, folks. I've... I've got 150 gold. I have, 100, I have an, uh, 191, I, so that's good. Uh, I have a 360 gold now, actually. Yeah, you have... Because I have a stockpile. I think... You're so stacked. I, you're so stacked. I think I'm stacked because Mordecai didn't want to hang on to his. That's fair. <laughs> that sounds I right. Think you were, you were, I, I think that sounds right, actually. You were sort of our mobile chest last time. Someone campaign. has to be. Yeah. It's fine. I've got everything except the uh, ice cooler of healing potions. That's the fierce job. <laughs> yes, that that, that stays on the fear at all times. That's all. It's all me, baby. All right. Uh, you walk in, and there is a a tiefling sitting behind a desk. He does not flinch as you enter, let alone when the bell jingles, and he just kind of stiffly waves a hand. Well, hello there. Welcome. Oh, hello. hello. Welcome to Black's Best. The name's Sam Black. How can I help you today? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh, looking to, um, well, peruse your wares, if that is all right. Of course, please. Please, happily. They are expansive, as they are wonderful. Please, take a look. I have 150 gold. Mm, do you now? <laughs> <laughs> and he leans forward. <laughs> I have no, I have no metric for whether that is a lot or a lot. <laughs> is like a kid who just walked into like Toys R Us <laughs> and like found the first employee. He's like, I have five dollars. What can what I get? Can I get for this? <laughs> <laughs> How many action figures can I buy with this? That is a mood. Oh boy. <laughs> Based on his reaction, though, because I am wiser than I am smart, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take to, I'm gonna take that as I have a decent chunk of change. Mm-hmm. All right, I just kind of like recoil and hold my purse a little tighter. Okay, for what it's worth, I'm literally looking for anything that just like, and this is this is a dumb answer, mm-hmm. but or a dumb thing to say, but I'm looking for something that calls. Okay, me. absolutely, because I'm just looking for something that like would that seems like that fits the wanderer to me. So you're looking around, and I will tell you what you see base level, and if you want to do any further research or ask about it, you mm-hmm. can do so. You find a um, a compass that always seems to point in the same direction, but it doesn't seem to be north. A fan, a looks kind of like a rock, basically. Kind of hard to tell anything beyond that. I like rocks. A glass cup. A mirror. A uh, small glass bird, a lady's purse, a uh, small conch cell, a frost-covered locket, 
and a uh, looks like a stamp of some kind. Hmm. Magic eyes? Okay. Do I get schools of magic from things? Am I seeing a little bit of everything? Yeah, it's it's covering the gamut there. You would have to ask about specific things. The rock, does it look like the one I found last time? It does not. You actually pick okay. it up, and it's not a rock at all. It's a petrified potato. What the fuck? <laughs> and as you turn it over... Why? <laughs> As you turn it around, kind of, kind of looks like Jackson. What? What's what school of magic is this thing radiating? What? Transmutation. Okay. What? <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> what? Um, well, that actually eliminates it from my list of interesting um, things. So do um, what these? These because it's not a rock. <laughs> I just kind of hold the potato up. Oh. That's 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 a fun one. I'm not sure exactly how it came to be or where it. Well, I know roughly where it came from. It, it, it came from up north a bit towards the coast. Funny story, really, but later on, certainly. Uh, that potato actually, it looks different to everyone who looks at it. So I've noticed. Yes. Um. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> 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 this is the best item is ever. This? Why is it a potato? <laughs> um, oh, this is really getting me. Okay. <laughs> Clearly. <sighs> um, I would like to examine the compass, please. Absolutely. The compass, it looks... It's a nice compass, mm -hmm. but it seems to always be pointing uh, roughly southwest from where you are. Huh. Okay. What with the with the compass? If you walk around a bit, does the arrow change? Nope. Point the same direction. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, it moves very, very slightly, but not to correct. Much. Yeah, it yeah. wiggles. It's, it's, it's not like broken. Place. It's not broken. It's just pointing somewhere specific. I also want to look at the stamp. You pick it up, and there is a, a weird crest on the underside, and you press it into the wood of the shelf, and it doesn't seem to do much of anything. Press it onto my wrist. Nothing. Ah, damn. Mr. Black looks toward at you. Uh, it only works on rock, weirdly enough, but be careful, it's very permanent. Um, I just mold earth a little stone out of the ground. Ah, and, fuck, um, yeah, that'll do it. And you, just stamp it real quick. You just said it was, palm. okay. <sighs> You see, it is a knot of snakes. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Yeesh. Does it, does it does it do anything? The snakes, or are they just? It's just a picture. It's spooky. It's certainly an old crest of some kind, but frankly, I haven't been able to do a whole lot of research into it as of yet. I'm kind of interested in the stamp, y'all. All right. Well, while you two are mulling over. Your potential purchases will go ahead and bounce on over to Jackson. Go ahead and roll me perception or insight, whatever is better for you. I think they're actually the same. Oh, there you go. Uh, 14. You take off down into the uh, into the market itself. You avoid the shelter house at Amareya Dejani advising. It would be strange for, like, a holy site to be, like, in the heart of mercantile like that. You actually take off towards the woods. And as you move out that way, you move... It seems like the, the type of shops change pretty rapidly. Out where you were, uh, there were a lot of open-air tents, uh, stalls, and uh, temporary installations like that. As you move towards the woods, you actually find more and more permanent things. Buildings of stone and wood that have been there for time upon time upon time. Uh, you're walking down one of the few actual, not cobbled, but maintained permanent streets. And you are hit, as you get out that way, you are hit with that same sour smell that Mordecai could smell earlier. But while you're in this ne neck of the woods, you are able to find a holy site uh, not to any of the gods that you would have considered worshipping in your past, but to the lords of the forest. Uh, sure. It is a 
combination shrine. It is a uh, four uh, stripped bare massive tree trunks cordoning off an open area. In each of the trees, there are carvings for each of the individual lords of the forest and pews emanating away from the trees to a center pulpit uh, so that you could sit facing either direction. Great. Okay, so the the four... There's the, the four lords of the forest are, because there's the four lords of the forest, but then there's a whole bunch of other ones. There are, you know, gods upon gods upon gods that are being worshipped, you know, constantly. Nobody knows, you know, the, um, the authenticity of any particular deity over another. However, the lords of the forest have shown their muscle before, C-34 not being the least of them. So this is like, what, the Lord of Reaping and then a couple others? You have the, you, there are the four lords of the forest. Uh, you have Yarrow, Lord of Reaping, Linso, Lord of Storms, Galo, Lord of Tangle, and Mavo, Lord of the Pack. Okay, so it is those four. Okay. Yes, it is all four. Each one of them has a shrine at each of the corners there. Amare Dejani, as you arrive, he just keeps walking in and starts to admire the handiwork on the actual trunks themselves. There are a couple of people in robes seem to be maintaining the area and casting some very light magics. But other than that, you're not alone. This is an open air area, but uh, you are not being approached either. Great. I honestly don't have much of an agenda here beyond just seeing how they keep their shrines and what they look like and just know and, and just committing to memory what symbols they use and stuff like that. I won't pull out a book and start taking notes or sketching or any of that because that feels a little too brash for our current situation. But just go going around to each of them. I take a, sec- a couple seconds longer at the Lord of Reaping, remembering the, the flight away from the inn. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, so as you go to each one, you are able to see some very clear iconography. The Lord of Reaping actually, for all the differences that you have had in the past, the Lord of Reaping does seem to be the most familiar to you. Um, it has the uh, the image of a scarecrow before two very small hand scythes. All around him are um, images of bountiful fruits, things like uh, wheat hops, uh, corn, uh, things that you would have grown back in Plains Watch, things that certainly they would need out here as well. Beyond that, you do see some uh, images of people. You're not sure if they are warriors or farmers or victims, whether they are the reapers or the reaped. It's hard to say. But clearly, no matter what they are, they are honored here as well. I'll come up next to Amorea and just kind of like, you know, uh, one you know one of those uh, quiet scenes in a gangster movie where you're, you're uh, both stop at the 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 casket at the front of the room and the important conversation happens quietly there, and mm-hmm. I just kind of stand next to him and go, "So do you uh, recognize any of this? Is this jumping out at you?" No, not really. It is like I said, there were many of my ilk before I was. Uh, indisposed but this is all strange and while certainly there were gods of harvests and storms and and the woods and family this is the combination the pantheon is new it seems not false but cobbled together eschewed crafted Their magic is here. I can feel it in how my hand trembles. But it is not my magic. Not like I have it. This is something different. I am looking forward to learning more about them. Is is it more like... Well, you you didn't really see much of the cities on the other side of the wall, but I'm sure you you, you were caught up on the, the warrior and the guides and all of them over there. Is this kind of like that? No, not quite. The guides are interesting, you know. 
You do not speak to the guides the way you speak to me. You channel them. You become one with the guides. This is a beseechment. If anything, these are much closer to the patrons of the traditional ilk of the patrons, I should say. Much more similar to, to Gaia or the Wanderer. But you can feel their power here? It's, it's oh, here. yes. Okay. Oh, yes. I would not cross them here. Noted. Well, do you smell that? You know, I... Barely. It's gotten better since we've gotten in here. At that, you said that just, just loud enough, I think, for one of the clerics tending nearby to come over very apologetically. I am... I am so sorry about that. Really, I am. There's not much we can do about it, unfortunately. It is, um, it's something we've been working on for a while. In our defense, it's not our fault. Well, what, it, what, it, what is it? It's, and she looks further down the road. It's the, uh, it's our neighbors down that way. It's the hard crafters, the ones that make, um, Leathers and jewelry and armor. Ah, so we can just smell the forges. The forges, the chemicals they use for tanning. Yeah, Yeah. that tanning stank. They just, they used to have a good way, they used to employ people to get rid of it in a safe and proper manner that didn't affect everybody else. But then they realized that it was just much cheaper to throw it out to their windows. (laughs) windows. <laughs> definitely, you could definitely tell they were stifling up something, a curse where they would not use to befoul this area. This holy land. They will not befoul with that kind of language that they would much you prefer to be used. You desecrate the house of God! Yeah, exactly. Are we, are we about to go on an eco-pollution side quest? <laughs> <laughs> That's entirely up for you to decide. See, I thought this was all, I thought this was all just a shout out to uh, the Bowling Green water treatment plant. <laughs> no, if it's a shout out to anything, it's a shout out to the uh, to the slaughterhouses in Bowling Green, which you can absolutely smell from certain apartments. I know Griffin pointing to yourself, mm-hmm. but no, they have been just—they've made a swamp. It's so bad. That is unfortunate. There are some druids wandering about trying to gather people to their cause to actually clean it up a little bit, tidy things, and make it a bit more habitable for the children in the area when they come. But unfortunately, it was just a matter of convenience for them, I suppose. Well, there you have it. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You seem new here? I am. My name is Sister Christie, and you are? Jackson, his bodyguard. Johnny, if you please. <laughs> Pleasure. Are you all f- new arrivals from... And she jostles her head over back towards the general wallular area. <laughs> the wallular area. Wallular. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, from that direction. We're making our making mm-hmm. our way all the way east. It'll Very good. take a couple of days. I completely understand. No, it is a. Uh, it's going to take some adjustment. I've, I, my parents themselves were actually from over there, so I understand that there's, uh, there is a period of adjustment and reattunement. But I think you're gonna like it over here. And she places her hand on your shoulder, and Johnny's shoulder. Welcome, brothers. Please let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Lords be with you. Thank you. And she walks off. I pull on Murray and we kind of walk out and uh, just get out of eyesight and very quickly like do a once over and check and make sure we didn't just get magic cast on us. No, y'all are clean. Okay. Jackson's got one job. Yep. Uh, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Fair Jackson's enough. got one cl- job and that cleric got handsy. <laughs> 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 Gotta watch out for them handsy clerics. And back to the shopping boys. Yes. Um, God. Uh, I want. Uh, I don't know why I didn't go to this first. I gotta check out the purse. Okay. 
It's the fear. It's fashion. I it's gotta true. check out the purse. And it's it is a fashion. nice it's a nice little purse. It's um got a a weird pattern printed on it that you're not used to seeing. It's very organic, very flowy, uh green and blue. It's got a gold and silver clasp. And you pop it open and there are two fangs inside. Oh yeah? Yeah. Like like it would like like it's a mouth? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No. Oh, two fangs inside the purse. purse. <laughs> the best bag I of I thought holding. you meant like the purse had fangs. Yes, no. And what, uh it, there are if, two loose fangs yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah, two loose fangs. All right. Uh magic guys. Yep. Um, magic eyes, they do have a little bit of magic, a little bit of evocation to them. The fangs, not the purse. The fangs, yes. The purse mm. seems like a purse. All right. Um, um, uh, uh, Mr. Black, uh, this is um, the purse. The, the mm. fangs come with it and or vice versa. Yes, bo- to both. Beautiful. What can you tell me about this? Well, and he motions you to bring the fangs over. Or to bring the whole purse over, the unit. Yeah. I bring the whole, the, the whole unit. Bring that unit. <laughs> bring that unit. Um, and he pops the open unit. the purse and is looking uh, looking in at them. He's like, oh, yeah. These. I've had these actually sitting up here for a little while now. These are, um, well, they told me that they were basilisk fangs. I'm not exactly sure the efficacy of that. Eyes just wide. <laughs> young, young, young basilisks. Now, I haven't tested these. But the seller told me that these fangs came all the way from down south and the deserts down that way. And that uh, if you were to somehow, and I don't know how you would do these because these are not long fangs. They're like maybe like inch and a half, two inches. But if you could somehow lay these into somebody, you might be able to get a little bit of uh, fire damage off on them. Stab them with some fangs. <laughs> Zafir, you meet Mordecai. Mordecai overhears this conversation. You meet his gaze across the room, and he's just nodding. <laughs> I, I'm like, do you want do you want these? Can I keep the purse? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Cool. I I, 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 hand, I hand the the. Uh, I'm like, here you go, to to Mordecai. Unless you okay. want me to get them, and you, I'm still looking around, but like, okay. All right. But, so we'll, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'll yeah. I'll set this on the counter. We'll come back to it. <laughs> um. I really quickly want to peep at the mirror. Okay. You pick up the mirror, and you can already tell what is interesting about this immediately without having to ask anybody. It doesn't show your face. It shows the back of your head. I put it down. Nope. Gone. (laughs) (laughs) Off the list. Striking it off right now. (laughs) Fuck that. Mordecai nopes the... Nope. 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 Yep. (laughs) We, We had a little text chat. I think we both were interested in this glass bird. Yeah, I think we're we're making our way around it. We bump into each other, and our hands both reach out for the bird at the same time. Lady in red. <laughs> it is very tall, and it's got kind of like a like a red body to it, and a nice, pretty yellow beak. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, it seems to have like a hinge to it. Magic, magic guy. Very, very light evocation. Light evocation. Yes. Okay. Does the hinge like? Does it open? Does it have like a part component that opens, or is it like a little hand? No, it, it seems to like swivel. Oh, is it a dippy bird? <laughs> it's a dippy. It's bird. It's a dippy bird. <laughs> you, piece of, you piece of shit! I love you, Chase. I love it. All right, what else haven't we okay. checked out? So, so we've checked out um, the the, the potato. Content. I know what I want to buy. Okay, we checked out the potato, the purse, the bird, the mirror. There was a fan. There was, was a fan. fan, like like a fan, like a hand fan. Yes. I, I mean, I'll check it out. Why okay. Not? You pick it up. It doesn't seem to be anything special about it. You fan yourself with it. It literally does nothing for you. It huh. does not move the air. Huh. Curious. So the one purpose this is used for, it doesn't do it. I mean, Mister Black, what is it, this? Maybe it blows something else away, or like, well, maybe it moves Earth. Mm-hmm. I Doesn't have heard of multiple people using it as a distraction. What is it? But- How weird is it? How weird is that? Really? Oh, that's fair. You know what? I am pretty distracted right now. You raise a fair point, sir. <laughs> I was very concerned, so that would... Yes. All right. Uh, I think I'm ready to check out, provided I have enough cash. Okay. Uh, I want to buy the compass... 
the fangs mm. and the stamp if possible. Very good. Well, the compass, that's an interesting thing. That points to one of the, the very, fi- in my opinion, from what I've heard, uh, uh, cities in the country of Demore, a place called Vardo. Very good wine there. Very good wine. Great for helping you find your way home. I want some Marlowe and Vardo. You could probably get that there. <laughs> I think I could part with the compass for mm, 40 gold. All right. May I? Well, one second, mm-hmm. Mordecai. guy. am going to try mm. to get... If I may offer you um, well, uh, not, not a full-on trade, but of course say um, a few uh, uh, items um, to maybe knock some money off of that. Okay. Okay, beautiful. Um, I will go into my bag, mm-hmm. and I have a few things. I I'm gonna pull out, and Griffin, I think you'll be you'll be sad with me for for this one. Oh no! Um, I'm gonna pull out a little hippo. Oh, I'm fine with yeah, that. Yeah, that's good. Get rid of <laughs> that thing. I I, I I hold it in front of uh, uh, Mr. Black and I go, say something mean to it. Oh God, Zephyr. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Incense tears. <laughs> oh no! It, oh. It, cri- it cries water. Stop! Well, Cheer it up. <laughs> you're you're very beautiful. The tears dry up instantly. <sighs> hmm. What was the other thing that you wanted there? Uh the stamp. The stamp and the the fangs, the, right? The fangs, the, the compass, and yeah, well, the purse. The purse. Yes. And what yes. is in the purse? Okay. I want very good. Purse. I would. I. W- with this fine specimen of magic, I would be willing to let both of those go for an additional 20 gold. Done. So 60 total for the lot, then? Yes. Plus the hit. Done. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yes. Very good. I pay the man. All right. The man is paid, and uh, Mr. Black picks up the hippo, and it's a, it's a hefty, hefty piece of rock there. It's like, very good. I like this. Stupid piece of shit. And it starts crying, and he immediately puts a bucket under it. Oh, that hippo. The water... The water's pretty good. Did you ever try it? No! Uh, I didn't want to make it cry. I mean, I I made... It worked the first time, but then I didn't really want to make it cry again. And does something with it and comes back out. Very well. Is there anything else I could do for you all today? Um, be be nice to the hippo. Yeah, I I think we looked at um everything else. So thank you very much. I I looked at Mordecai and I you know put my hand out and I'm like, give me, mm, give what? me. Oh yeah, here's your purse. I take Beautiful. the fangs out. I put, put it, it on, in my pocket. I put mm-hmm. it on. Very good. <laughs> Elegant. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh oh, actually, sorry. I turn well, around and I go. I I do have something. Um, you you know you seem to know your your uh uh, uh well some things mm-hmm. and um just interested to get your take on this and I, I do want to pull out that stone I found last time see if I can get a second opinion on it hmm. Hmm. it's not a potato it, this is not the potato no definitely not let me I've got nothing I'm sorry oh, this is very fine. strange I put it in my bag and I leave have a good day alright bye bye Sam bye it was nice to have a cameo <laughs> <laughs> That NPC was named after Sam Black, the winner of the uh, GM Tips uh, contest. Woo! Oh, yeah! Support GM Tips! Yeah. So the yeah. two of you take off into the setting sun. Uh, now is starting to filter into the actual canopy area itself. And you set off to find the ill-kept keep. Meanwhile, in the shade of the Hardcrafters Guild, four figures stand at the end of what has become known as Tanner's Bog. Each is dressed in simple garb, brown leathers and green cloaks slung over their shoulders, simple wooden and stone weapons at their side. The tangy stench of the swamp seethes around them as the dying light of day filters in through the trees, lighting the murky liquid at their feet. The shortest, a goblin steps forward and holds out a club. He flicks it for a moment, sending a pulse of magic into it, and lowers it into the future depths. The water seethes, and for just a moment, it seems to 
almost purify before returning to its neutral, foul state. A voice yells at them from a nearby window to clear off, lest he six the guard after them. They heed his advice, turning heel and return to the open fields and away from the scent. They heed his advice. For now. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash anotherpathpodcast. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com forward slash anotherpath. A special thanks to our donor, Nathan N., or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can also find me on Twitter at TQ Loudly, Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht Griffin at Griffcold and Zach at that guy, Zach Robb. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. And until then, remember the value of shopping around before you make a purchase. <laughs>